You've got to experience 1980s Miami with this guy, and also with another, you've gotten to sail across an ocean for some big old titties. I'm kidding. <laughs> so we thought. But why don't we hear from these characters anymore? Today we're going to be talking about why there is almost a 100% chance of never seeing the return of Tommy Versetti and Nico Bellic, some of our fan favorite GTA protagonists. And we're just going to talk about why we will probably never see them again in a GTA game in comparison to other characters like CJ, Claude, and just various other people throughout the series. So hopefully you find the video enjoyable. Let's get started. With GTA Vice City, Rockstar wanted to go Hollywood, and by Hollywood, I mean having big name stars play the characters in Vice City. However, Rockstar found out the hard way that Hollywood talent was full of unsuspecting challenges, and even though Vice City features the voices of bigger names like Ray Liotta, who voiced Tommy Versetti, and Burt Reynolds, who voiced Avery Carrington, that real estate guy who gave us that mission that was super hard with the RC helicopters. Yeah, that one. No! What? No! What? How? How? Uh... Pretty sure we all hated that guy and those missions. But back in the early days of gaming, game roles were not taken as serious as movie roles, so to speak. Unlike today, where game and movie roles are somewhat comparable because of motion capture and things of that nature, it's not like you're just voicing a character anymore. A lot of times, these voice actors are also getting up in these motion capture suits, these black suits with little dots all over them, and actually acting out the scenes in the game. Sometimes they have other people do that while the voice actors still just record their character's voice, but... Other than that, these were things that we really didn't have 15 or 20 years ago. So, that's what brings us to Tommy Versetti and why we haven't heard from him since GTA Vice City. And no, he's not dead, presumably, but aside from the obvious factor of different GTA universes taking place, the 3D universe, the HD universe, and let's go back to the 2D universe, we forgot that one, but uh, these universes essentially barred Tommy from ever making a return because Vice City and all the GTA games that came out on the PlayStation 2, those are in the 3D universe, and the HD universe is just GTA 4 and 5, so characters can't necessarily cross over, but uh, like references can be made and Easter eggs can, that's why we see uh, a lot of those. But at one point, it was a possibility for Tommy to return. And that was in GTA San Andreas. Because originally, Tommy was set to make a physical cameo in GTA San Andreas. But this, unfortunately, never ended up happening. And what did instead happen was Tommy was referenced in the introductory DVD for GTA San Andreas. Where Tommy's former lawyer, Ken Rosenberg, just got out of rehab. And he's desperately trying to contact Tommy. Ah, yes. Tommy Versetti, please. Tell him Ken Rosenberg called. Ken Rosenberg, you haven't heard of me? Who are you? Then later on in the game, Tommy is once again referenced by Ken Rosenberg in the meat business. Where he just mentions, Tommy, it's like the good old days. It's so exciting, Tommy. It's like old times. Who the fuck is Tommy? So why didn't Tommy ever make a return in the GTA series or just in GTA San Andreas like we just talked about? Well, this actually all goes back to his voice actor, Ray Liotta. So Tommy Versetti is described as both intelligent and temperamental. I just wanted to piss you off before I kill you. And well, so is his actual voice actor. And this just all goes back to money. Money's the root of all evil. You know, a wise old man once said that. But remember what I said earlier about games and movies not being comparable to each other back in the day? Well, because of Ray Liotta's status in Hollywood and his involvement in big name movies like Goodfellas, that's one of the bigger names, he looked down on Rockstar in an essence and felt he deserved more money for all the effort that he put into voicing Tommy for GTA Vice City. And... I mean, you can't be mad at the guy, right? Because would Vice City really be Vice City without Tommy Versetti's voice? I mean, I guess it could. What if they had, like, Eddie Murphy or, or Will Smith <laughs> voice Tommy? I mean, I don't think that would be too fitting. So I think Ray, Ray Liotta's voice is just perfect for Tommy. But 
Uh, who knows who else could have voiced him and if they could have done a better job or not. But nonetheless, when we think of Vice City and look back, we just think of Tommy and we can hear Tommy's voice, which is Ray Liotta. So uh, he did make a pretty big impact on the GTA series and video games as a whole. But back to what we were talking about before. Burning a bridge with a company like Rockstar, who is responsible for making a very successful game that I'm a part of, is something that I would definitely not like to do. That brings us to Nico Bellic. So, unlike Tommy, Nico Bellic wasn't officially, and I use that term loosely, set to return in the next Grand Theft Auto game, which was GTA 5. So, there's numerous indirect references to Nico in GTA 5, but there's nothing official from Rockstar pointing to Nico making a physical cameo. Yeah, he does make a somewhat appearance a cameo in GTA 5 that's in GTA Online which is completely different than story mode where you can choose him to be your character's parent model and that is not canon at all meaning it doesn't carry over from GTA 4 that's not actually Nico being your parent that is just simply um, just it was originally a collector's edition bonus so why hasn't this fan favorite GTA protagonist been heard from since 2008 well, just like Ray Liotta, it all boils down to, you guessed it, money. And to put things into perspective, GTA 4 made more than $500 million within one week, seven days of releasing, which is just insane. And out of all the revenue that GTA 4 made within one week, Nico Bellic's voice actor only made roughly $100,000 over the span of 15 months doing voice work for Rockstar Games. So, Nico's voice actor is named Michael Hollick, by the way, and before GTA 4, he was a low-level actor. He made small cameos in numerous movies and TV shows and things like that, and... While he didn't ever make it big time, his voice did. He even went on to win Best Male Voice Actor at the 2009 Video Game Awards. However, before GTA 4 released, Michael Hollick wasn't too familiar with the GTA franchise and how popular it really was. So, after seeing the commercial success of GTA 4 and really just worldwide success, he tried to negotiate for more money. I mean, who wouldn't, right? $100,000 over the span of 15 months is pretty good. I know you guys are saying, why is he complaining? He made 100,000 bucks, but that equates to around $1,050 per day. But in comparison to how much GTA 4 made within one week, $500 million, only making 100,000, that is super small in comparison. That's This is gonna be a really horrible comparison that I'm gonna make here, but that's like comparing the moon to the size of the sun. Like that. that's, that's literally the only way I can think to describe it. I don't even know if that makes any sense. So that can be pretty depressing to think about. Here's an interesting fact though. Actors in movies receive residuals from the sales of the movie. That's basically a percentage, so they always got this money coming in after the movie is finished and after it's done. But voice actors in video games don't. Once they finish acting and recording their voice lines, that's it. They don't get those residuals. So that's why Michael Hollick didn't get any more money from the sales of GTA 4. But if GTA 4 were a movie instead of a game, Michael Hollick would probably already be a millionaire. How about we just make GTA 4 into a movie? Why hasn't anyone done that yet? You might also think to yourself, why is this man complaining about $100,000? All he did was record his voice, kind of like what I'm doing right now, talking to you guys. But I don't think it's all that simple. I've done some research, and I found out that voice work can be just as exhausting as acting. You have to feel the role. You got to make it seem real, like you're talking to one person, but you're mad at somebody else while you're sad about somebody and want to kill this other person. So you got to make that emotion real. And it's hard to do when you're talking to nothing, especially recording for a video game. That's why it took 15 months to get all of this done. And there's definitely a lot more to just recording your voice. So this is the reason that Nico and his voice hasn't returned since GTA 4. Very unfortunate. I mean, check this out right here. This is a giant book of the GTA 4 script. This is every line of dialogue said in the game. And yeah, not all of it's Nico Bellic, but Nico Bellic's the protagonist, the main character, and he's in every single mission. So, you know, he takes up a lot of those pages. On another note, let's check out some cool references to Nico in GTA 5. 
While setting up for the jewelry store heist, Lester mentions to Nico about an Eastern European guy making moves in Liberty City, but nah, he went quiet. South, they all went down. There was a, an Eastern European guy making moves in Liberty City, but nah, he went quiet. And if you think about it, Nico literally went quiet because his voice actor isn't on good terms with Rockstar Games, meaning he's not going to make a return anytime soon. Well, that's about all the time we have for today, and that's also why we don't hear from some of our fan favorite GTA characters anymore. So, hopefully you guys found the video enjoyable. If so, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I hope to see you all in the next video.